How you actually provision and configure these servers is by using OtterScript. Now, those of you already familiar with Buildmaster or beta users of Hedgehog, you're already familiar with what OtterScript is. OtterScript is our DSL, domain-specific language, that we use for orchestrating and automating servers. We built OtterScript specifically for the purpose of server orchestration and automation, both for use in a tool like Otter and in Buildmaster Hedgehog and some of the other tools that we're coming out with down the line that use the same engine. What's really interesting about OtterScript is its tight integration with PowerShell and Shell. What you can basically do with OtterScript is the inline script execution for PowerShell statements, but also just directly execute PowerShell scripts as assets that you've stored inside of the tool or inside of a, another repository. So where OtterScript is a uh, DSL that that isn't as, it, it, it certainly isn't a general purpose language like PowerShell, you can easily drop down to a general purpose power language, uh, general purpose language anytime that you need inside of your Otter script. When you use Otter script with Otter itself, what you do is you use Otter generally to do Otter script to generally declare a desired state of configuration. To show you what that means, I've got an example here for what it would take to provision a server. So this is a very, very simple example. We've got a application called Accounts. And in order to run this application, we need to provision the server with the following configuration. At first, we need an IIS application pool named Accounts Web App Pool. That will have all sorts of different app pool configuration, but the two bits that are very simple are it has to have the .NET runtime of 4.0, and it uses a classic pipeline. Of course, we'll also need an IIS site named Accounts Web, It'll use that app pool, but it will also have a disk path that points to wherever we have the files on disks, and it will find our port bindings so that we can have users actually access the site. Typically, this is something that we would configure inside of IIS, and I can show you very quickly what that might look like. This is, I have, uh, I'm remoting into one of the servers that I've configured in Otter, and to do, to provision these in manually, you basically would just go add an application pool, type in the name, select the uh, runtime version, the pipeline, and so on. And of course, adding a site works the same way. So in Otter, this is, this is how we would do it. The first thing that we'll do in Otter is create a role. What the role does is defines this constant set of configuration that's going to apply to how to the servers that we want to run this on. In this case, we're going to call this accounts web. This role, the first thing that we're going to do is create our configuration plan. And as I mentioned too, you have more variables on roles as well. So you can use variables anywhere throughout the software that you need. When we create a configuration plan in Otter, the, we're, we're presented with this visual plan editor. What's interesting about OtterScript is that it can be developed using both this visual mode, which I'll show you right now, and also text mode. So first, let's use the visual mode. As I mentioned, we want to start by ensuring a application pool. And this, this language, ensure, what it basically means is if it doesn't exist, create it. If it already exists, make sure it looks like this configuration. So let's type in our basic configuration here, accounts pool, and we'll give it the .NET runtime 4.0 version, and we'll select our classic pipeline mode. Now, you'll see there's lots and lots of different options as well. All of these are the options that you would see if you were configuring an app pool from IIS. You've got the identity path process model. Uh, lots and lots of different options. Honestly, I don't know what most of these do, 
But people who manage and configure IIS certainly do, and the ability to configure all of these settings uh, are often pretty important. So I've added the first operation, which is to configure the application pool. Now let's do our second step, which is to ensure the site. This is pretty easy to do here. We'll just say the site name is accounts. The application pool I just typed in is accounts pool. And the virtual directory path we'll say is C websites accounts. For assigning the bindings, they can get a little complex because you can assign multiple IPs, multiple host names like that. Once you learn the binding syntax, it's, it's pretty easy. I already typed it out here, so I'm just going to go and copy paste what I had already typed in. What this is specifying is listen on any IP address, port 80, and for the host name, uh, accounts.web. Just like that, we've created our configuration plan. Now I want to show you what text mode looks like. Text mode is an exact mirroring of what we just entered in visual mode. You can switch back and forth between the two as often as you'd like. For example, if I just copy paste this operation like that, I switch right back to visual mode and I've got two copies of it. It doesn't really make sense to have two copies of an insure operation, obviously, because we're already insuring the site, so it'll just be totally duplicate. So I'll just go ahead and delete it, and you'll see exactly from the text mode, it's also deleted. So once I save the plan, now I can start assigning this role to servers. 